When lilacs are in bloom, I think of the bad school explosion because that day, the children brought bouquets to their teacher. After 75 years, Martha Horton can still hear the explosions that killed 38 of her fellow students. We're sort of raised out of our seat. The plaster came down, you know, and we were, then we were panicked. Everybody was panicked. It wasn't an accident. A disgruntled school board member named Andrew Kehoe set off dynamite with an alarm clock and a battery. The blast could be heard for 20 miles. Martha was trapped on the second floor until classmates found a ladder. One third of the Bath School building was gone. There was a boy named Piercy and his mother happened to come there and she found him uh, half covered with debris. She picked him up and his limbs were hanging. And she cried, Piercy, Piercy, she cried. 11-year-old Percy Hart, dead, along with his sisters Iola and Vivian. Lawrence Seeger escaped the building and saw a father grieving for his child. He was just holding his hands and praying real loudly. And that sticks in my mind. The horror was just beginning. As survivors ran for their lives, the bomber triggered another explosion in his truck. All of a sudden, there was a tremendous blast. That was the second explosion. We just saw sheets of flame all around us. Kehoe and Superintendent Emery Hike died in that blast, along with two rescuers and a child who had escaped from the school. Newspapers of the day used words like crazed and demented to describe the bomber, Andrew Kehoe. He was angry that his taxes had been raised to help pay for the new school building. He directed his rage at that building and every person inside. He'd worked over, over a period probably of several weeks. He'd come down to Bath, unload the explosives, and apparently would plant this dynamite meticulously throughout the school. A few hours before killing the children, Kehoe murdered his wife and burned their home and farm buildings. The final toll, 45 dead, 58 wounded. Casualties would have been far higher had the rest of the dynamite in the school exploded. I wonder what kind of a monster man he was, you know? You wonder what kind of brain. He was supposed to be a very intelligent man. And if he was intelligent, why would he do that? Out of pure hate, those children didn't do anything wrong. At Bath Middle School, a small museum preserves the photos and yellowing headlines. Art students made clay tiles to honor each victim, including 20-year-old teacher Hazel Weatherby. She died with two children in her arms. I think some things remain true, and that is um, compassion for other people and a sense of responsibility for your actions. Um, a sense that you are not alone, but you belong to a larger community. While Americans rejoiced over Lindbergh's flight in 1927, the families of Bath buried their dead. They rebuilt the school and tried to forget. I don't think we ever talked about it afterwards. We never exchanged our memories. Uh, it was just shut out. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe if we'd had counseling, it would have been brought out. But. Uh, we just kind of lived with these memories. This Saturday morning, people will gather around the cupola of the original school. At 945, they'll observe a moment of silence. I think it, in all cases, we remember our fallen soldiers, and we should remember these children who, who uh, were so innocent and it had to die that way. In Bath, Michigan, I'm Roger Weber, Local First.